here again at the James Museum of Western and Wildlife Art in St. Petersburg. This is the one I come to see. My favorite American painter, Earl Biss, Absoluca, and as uh, the crow uh, in the native language as well as I can do it, Earl Biss, a crow artist, Absoluca artist. Um, this painting changed my life. This painting to me is a spiritual experience. And if you know anything about Earl Biss, he was like many Native American painters, incredibly spiritual. If you've ever had the chance to see him paint uh, on video, if you've had the chance to read Lisa Gerstner's great book, uh, his biography, The Spirit Who Walks Among His People, Earl is a bridge. Earl is um, uh, a, a conduit between this world and another. When I see this painting, I see the Crow people, the Crow culture, Crow history, Crow future coming through Earl Biss onto the camp canvas. Now let's get up real close here. This is magic thunder in the northern sky, incredibly representative of Biss's work with these uh, figures on horseback. Not. Uh, entirely representational. They're there, but certainly not drawn out with a great deal of detail. It's contemporary in this color palette that is uh, really wild and neon with the uh, pinks and some chartreuse. Um, you see an abstracted mountain range back here, but again, it's these spectral figures. And if you've seen, again, if you can uh, visit YouTube, just search Earl Biss, and there are some uh, videos in there, again, from Lisa Gerstner, who uh, wrote his biography, pictures of him painting. And when you see him paint, he is flinging paint against the canvas. He's throwing water on it. He's using rags and mops and brushes and pouring bottles of water out there. What really fascinates me about this picture, what is this? Again, to me, that is Earl putting another dimension on the canvas, another reality. Is it where the Crow ancestors go? Is it where Earl is now? Earl uh, died suddenly in uh, 1999, I believe, at the age of just 51. But if you were to ask Earl, he said he had lived many lives before and he would live many lives again. And I am not a religious person. I am not particularly a spiritual person, but I can also not deny that when I look at this picture and so many of Earl Biss's paintings, I can see other realms. I can see Earl channeling past and future into the canvas. That's what I see up here. It's cosmic. How did Earl ever see that? Did he know it from a previous life? Did he know it from a future life? This is where the crow came in through Earl and out onto the canvas. And that sounds incredibly uh, woo-woo and it sounds kind of crazy until you stand in front of this painting and connect to Earl Biss. And that's one of the great things about art, you know, um, I don't particularly connect with Mark Rothko, but a lot of people stand in front of Mark Rothko and they get a, a spiritual, religious experience. Earl Biss does that for me. Some people can look at Pollock and they just see squiggles and drips and drabs. I see different universes in Pollock. Some people will look at, at Leonardo and the um, religious iconography really connects to them. They, they view those pieces as very spiritual. They don't do a thing for me. Uh, art is individual, and that's okay. And one of the great things about visiting museums is you're gonna find something that really attracts you. And I remember coming to the James Museum for the first time, had never seen an Earl Biss painting before. I rounded the corner back there, and I saw this thing full on, and it sucked me in. 
and I spent 20, 30 minutes in front of this painting wondering, well, was it the, is it the brush strokes that I'm attracted to? Is it the, the fastness? Earl painted fast, uh, you can see here. This is not something that he you know, sketched out. Now I'm gonna put a figure here and a figure there and a group of figures here and I'm gonna do... He went with it, he felt it. He was, um, and again, I hate to say improvisation because it, it seems to dismiss his talent. He was incredibly talented. Um, incredibly good at moving paint around. That's the expression that, that he used. He, again, he worked with uh, big rags and he worked with mops and brushes. I've seen him in these videos uh, painting with a, a brush in each hand simultaneously. It's the most incredible thing you've ever seen. So Earl could move the paint. He had incredible talent. He was highly trained, highly skilled, but when you watch him paint, you know he's not planning everything out um, systematically or academically. He is allowing the spirit to come into him. And I would say he's out of control. He is not, um, he's present in that he's so focused on what he's doing, he's not aware of anything else, but he's not present in that you couldn't have a conversation with him. He's not like, yeah, and then this thing happened and that thing happened. He is, he is feeling it, he is, um, completely lost in what he's doing. He is in a different um, mental, spiritual place, and that's what allows for this to happen. And when I stopped thinking about this as a technical piece of art, really flinging paint on here, and you know, look at the impasto, and I love the color, and oh, I also get these effects. And I just realized this is Earl, the spirit who walks among his people, connecting to the Crow culture, ancestors, the Crow future, places his ancestors have been that he can't show us in any other way. This is an incredibly uh, spiritual canvas and uh, an artist who is connected to something much, much deeper than just uh, oil and canvas.